Welcome back. Uh, welcome back from Alessandro. And Abe. Mm -hmm. So we left with a uh, sim uh, similar looking... Yeah. I, I, was trying, I was struggling a bit to rotate them mm -hmm. in a more extreme way. Like we had something like this where they all rotated equally. Yeah. And I was using here T, mm -hmm. but actually it's if you use it, which is a much higher number, mm -hmm. then then you can get... So this number has to be really big to yeah. say, to see a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we want to show another uh, funny, fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so we can say bye to all of this code, probably. Goodbye. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> Blank mm. stay slate with the horror that it brings. <laughs> but we know what to do at least at this moment. So, okay. So what we want to show is how to um, basically um, one can do interesting stuff with this contour mm -hmm. uh, you, by using the, the thing about segments that we have learned before. Okay. Yeah. So we start from a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put a rectangle at the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. Later we can make a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, from center, let's see, exactly. how does this look like? Uh, drawer, uh, contour, well, I call it shape. Ah, it's going to mm -hmm. be a contour, no? Mm -hmm. Contour, and mm -hmm. I'll call it C. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and we have there... Let's remove the filling just to for clarity. Drawer, fill, okay. null. So now what, what we want to do, we would like to bend mm -hmm. the edges yeah. of this square. We can keep the vertices mm -hmm. at the end. In position, yeah. and we can bend them. Okay. So how do we extract now the vertices? So we have to go into the segments, mm -hmm. and we will map those segments into new segments, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, segs is map... Mm -hmm. uh, now each of these segments will carry the start and ending point that we can that we can use. Mm -hmm. um, let me import mm -hmm. this. So this mm -hmm. would be this would do nothing. Basically, mm -hmm. it's recreating the same thing. Exactly. But now we can insert a control point in exactly. the middle. Exactly. Now we can pass from somehow a linear segment to a quadratic one. Mm -hmm. um, I could start by mixing or finding the middle point between the two. Mm -hmm. and then add some randomness. Uh, this mm -hmm. is the middle point. And I will do like before, I call it offset. Yeah. So, well, offset is... Uh, like polar coordinates or something like this? For yeah. example. For example. Um, well, since we did this last time, and we can just add a vector to uniform. Mm -hmm. um, between... It's not... Maybe it's not so elegant because... Mm -hmm. Because it it's doesn't a have a unit, yeah, and yeah. also it doesn't have the a unit land. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But okay, we have some now segments. Mm -hmm. uh, well now we could reconstruct a new contour. Mm -hmm. uh, is a shape contour from segments, and these mm -hmm. are the modified segments, mm -hmm. and it's a closed shape. Right. And, <laughs> and you can see maybe we can also be more generous with uh, <laughs> the the bending. Yeah. Or maybe we could do something. Uh, yeah. Okay. No. Let's let's do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now the interesting part about this little piece of code is that if we substitute to see mm -hmm. any shape contour, mm -hmm. this will you know stay unaltered. Yeah. And we'll get the same effect. So let, let's create some points. Yeah. Let's create... Um, I was thinking, we can try with a circle. Ah, we yeah. can try with a pentagon. Ah, uh, right. We also have regular... Yes. So and we can, we can try with a random one. Right. So we can use a regular, the regular polygon yeah. function. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> How would a circle look like? I don't uh, know. A circle. Now we will discover. Uh, import it. It's going to be... Uh -huh. Oh, ah. because the circle is approximated <laughs> by... Yeah, you know what happened? Yeah. So th the circle uh, originally had four segments. Yes. And each one had two control points yes. bending it. Yeah. 
to become a circle. Yeah. And we destroyed the circle. Exactly. <laughs> and, and we, we are, are left with the four, with <laughs> sad four segments. <laughs> so I would yeah. say it's better if we pass to a regular polygon. Yeah. <laughs> but this is interesting because it shows mm -hmm. that basically the circle thing is a mathematical construction out of these quadratic yeah. uh, segments. Right. Um, and that's the information that he, he, it has. Mm -hmm. To use the regular polygons, I think we have to... No, I create sh ah, Shapes are there. Yeah. So what uh, is... Regular. Uh, did you try regular uh, polygon? I tried regular... No, no, with the lower, lower R, ah, it's a function. You're right. Yes. Regular polygon. Yes. For example, with five sides. Yeah. And then what? Uh, the, the center yes. and the radius. Yeah. Drawer, both center, <laughs> radius 300. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. And Very nice. And you can see that uh, we didn't have to modify any part of the subsequent code mm -hmm. because for uh, syntactical coherence, as long as you have a shape contour, this code will apply. Yeah. I mean, in, in the ordinary life, we would, we would probably abstract this code in a function mm -hmm. and have it ready. Like, I, I want to create a, like, I don't know, a 40 or 20... In, a nested uh, mm -hmm. a hexagon, so mm -hmm. uh, and then do the same thing. So we can do a list of a certain number of hexagons, yeah. like ten, and have the radius be dependent from the index, right? Yeah. Let me see. Forty of these, mm -hmm. and then the radius is going to be I don't know two hundred plus e times. Three. Mm -hmm. So we have now a lot of contours. Yes. And now, now we can yeah, prefix these with a map and call the variable C. So what do we need? The contours, we map those contours. Mm -hmm. And call the variable C, so to reuse the code. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we need also um, to map here, to uh, have shape contour from... Ah, right. Yeah. Ah, so if we are mapping, we can put this inside and mm -hmm. just return this, no? Right. Uh, but this will be called segs now, which is a bit ah, confusing. Val segs. Right. Right, so... Um, well, I don't know, inner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I doing it right? I think, mm -hmm. yeah. But, like, also this variable now is called segs. Ah. <laughs> like... What uh, is this now? Like it's like a, it's a list of shape contours. Let's call the shapes. World. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> world. O okay. Okay. <laughs> I will not object to that. So now we can. Uh, yeah. So what have you done? We we first created forty hexagons. Mm -hmm. Then we map. Mm -hmm. those hexagons into something new. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so, return that something new. Yeah. So in each case, we take that thing, that mm -hmm. hexagon, and we modify all the segments. Mm -hmm. We construct a new shape contour with those modified segments. Exactly. So that's our world. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to save. And then... Nice. <laughs> okay. So they look... They, what? It's interesting. They're modified, but uh, what is not so nice is that there's no connection between one hexagon and the neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that's because we use this uh, uniform yes, here. Yes, so there is no correlation, basically. I mean, it's a uniform distribution. Mm -hmm. So, And it would okay. be better to maybe use simplex or something, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of... Right. But now we could use probably polar coordinates to shift and have the angle mm -hmm. like uh, use, uh, the obtained by simplex. Simplex right. of the point where it has been... Uh -huh. uh, Okay. So we have we can use the the segments. What is it? The orientation. Mm -hmm. or the, the direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, you want to do it uh, perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we I think we can query the direction probably. Uh -huh. Can we? Uh, it's direction. Direction. Yeah. Direction. Yes. Or is there normal? We can also query the normal. Ah, yeah. Normal at, at the point five. At point five. Exactly. Okay. And now, and now the length we can modify with a with simplex. A no, yeah. A simplex valued at the point right. where we query the normal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We will explain why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we where are we? We are 
at a segment. Yeah. So we can query the position at yeah. there. Well, P is, we are at this segment. Mm -hmm. We want the position at the center of the segment. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use this position uh, to feed the noise. Mm -hmm. P dot X, P dot Maybe y. we want to multiply for yeah. um, because otherwise it's wild. Yeah, by default yeah. these numbers are too large mm -hmm. because we, they are in pixels. Yeah. And then zero there wouldn't be zero any one. connection yeah. with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. So if we, I don't know if this is called yeah. zoomed in or zoomed out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> zoomed I think in, I would I say guess. zoom in, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, let me put this in another line. Mm -hmm. So if we zoom in, Okay, now it's you see, very now subtle. We now it's very subtle, but uh, we can uh, ah, we actually we have add to multiply. Yeah. multiply. Yeah. And probably and since this is uh, normalized, mm -hmm. we mul want to multiply also, yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Increase the, the length. This is oh, nice. Oh, this is very nice. Maybe... Now we can also... Maybe we zoomed in too much. Yeah. Uh, so we can try zooming in less. Yes, really this nice. is very nice. Maybe we could also um, make this quantity uh, animate in some yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking we can throw in seconds inside the simplex, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be... On the third, uh, because the, I yeah. think probably we, we could use... The simplex is two-dimensional or three-dimensional? I think there's also with three. But uh, there is also simplex 3D, no? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, we just put here... Ah, it's overloaded. And okay. done. <laughs> well, we just have to recreate this whole thing. I don't mm -hmm. know. Is this heavy for the computer? I don't know. But now it's going to be animated. Oh, <laughs> maybe we can slow down the... This time? The time, yeah. It's and very nice. And we can uh, add like higher, like more separation. Yeah. Oh, but then it needs more. Yeah. Oh no, uh, no 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 no! We keep the, the density like it's changed. This. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, it's um, a very interesting. Well, we could. <laughs> we're going crazy. This is, was not our time to play, but <laughs> mm -hmm. but okay, okay. <laughs> but I think we are still still conveying valuable yeah. information. So, but the polygon has a face, right? So we can show seconds. Is this the face argument or no? Uh, I don't know. Radius face, yeah. Yeah. So then now it's rotating. Yeah, but we can can we make them rotate out of face because you know just also. like chaos. <laughs> 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 so dependent on t. Uh, like, uh, how can we do? They should have all a slight uh, yeah. offset. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is let me see rotation offset. Yeah. All rotation offset. Uh, yeah. So, so far it's seconds, yeah. and we want sign of something, yeah. maybe. Actually, actually, do we could do something like this. We can have uh, um, yeah, something cool. We can have uh, uh, the ABS, like the absolute value, okay. right, of a sign, uh -huh. but with a very, very, very large frequency. Uh -huh. So, basically, basically, this will emulate randomness. Uh -huh. That's the way you, you do randomness in GLSL, right. like, you know, power, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, so to be able to get some randomness there <laughs> so we can see what happens yes let's see let's so see. where do i throw that ibs ABS yes yes on uh, the and then this number put it very high like functional like um, uh three thousand yeah wait and rotation offset we need a larger yeah yeah a uh, uh, multiplier Ooh, here. <laughs> let's reduce this a bit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, this is cool. Yeah, very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, this is very beautiful. Nice. This is very cool. Now, the, the point is that this 10 is a parameter that it really gives a different mm -hmm. texture and vibe. Yeah. We have seen it when it's too much. Yeah. You don't basically only see random mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But now it's creating this sort of curvy yeah. thing here that I really like. Huh. It's a sign, and the w reason it bounces here mm -hmm. is because of the absolute. Right. If exactly. I, if we remove the absolute, then it's like a wave. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is also very nice. And I wanted to add s seconds there. Uh, so, 
then Ooh. maybe zero Ooh. or one or something. Yeah. So now it wobbles yeah. along. And I think another thing that we can uh, do and uh, wrap up this video <laughs> is uh, use transparency uh -huh. on the various uh, hexagons. Okay. And the more they are far from the center, the more transparent they are. Mm -hmm. I don't know how open render is going to be because uh, do because contours is more optimized yeah. for multiple shapes. Yeah. But let's see. Let's yeah. see how it do how it does. Yeah. So uh, we so will world have to basically we have yeah for each world <laughs> exactly world for each. Mm. Uh, this would be a, a country. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's keep with the metaphor. Oh. Um, so, drawer, uh, contour, country. Mm -hmm. And now we want to change the The stroke. opacity, we want it to basically decrease with the, with the index. Mm -hmm. So, I think what we want to do is for each index, probably, no? Yeah. Yeah. For each. And we can do 1 over 1.0 plus uh, it. Yeah. Plus i, no? So one dot zero divided uh, divided by one dot zero one plus i. Plus i. And I so think I think maybe with some coefficient because yeah, this, this is, is gonna, gonna be very yeah. extreme. Oh it's yeah, beautiful yeah. also. It's yeah. really beautiful. It's like yeah. fog. Yeah. So maybe multiply i by zero dot one. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nice, I would say. <laughs> yeah. All right. And yeah, you always can go back and just change one number, then you have a pentagon. Exactly. Or a square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's really, I, I really like the aesthetic of this. It looks like cloth. Yeah. Almost. And I like this, the fact that the opacity, uh, and yeah, it doesn't go, of course, the opacity doesn't go uh, linear, which mm -hmm. is uh, actually, can you do like squared just for fun? Of I? I, yeah. I times I. But then you have to decrease also zero not one. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, that's that's because now it's trying to go down like one over one plus x square. Yeah. 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 It's really nice actually. <laughs> I really like it. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can wrap up this video where we had a little bit of fun, <laughs> but also showed how basically um, once you do something for a shape contour mm -hmm. uh, using segments, you can apply do it for any shape contour, and yeah. uh, so this will, that will, will, will allow you to explore much quicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if the term prototype is correct for art, but let's say so. Like you can prototype multiple art pieces very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can, you are seeing while while I speak. <laughs> okay. So in the next, uh, we have promised it. So in the next episode, we'll talk about shapes. Mm -hmm. That is the last uh, part of this hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we hope to see you there. Yeah, see you soon. See you soon.